Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at how to create abstract shaders or rather abstract materials. Now I saw a couple of you asking in a soft body collision tutorial that I did a while back how I did the materials on one of the spheres. So today we'll take a look at how to make those. It's very simple, very basic, uh, really easy to use. You can set it up in a couple of minutes and have really good results. So let's get into it. So in terms of preparation, I've already prepared a object. It's a simple cloth simulation. I've divided my screen. So on the left, I have my viewport shading. On the right, it's going to be my rendered. And below you see the shader menu. Now, I also have to prepare some other stuff. So I'll go into my render engine, switch it to cycles, set to GPU. I also take on experimental. I'll leave almost everything, just color management. I'll put it to high contrast. It usually bears a bit of a better result. Render region, so I'm ready for the camera. Uh, one more thing, under film, you can check transparent. So when it renders, you're not gonna see the background and I'll set up a very simple HDRI map. When I switch to my rendered view, I see something like this. Material number one, it's going to be the one that I did in the actual tutorial. So it's the golden specs on one sphere, Control T. So I have my texture coordinate mapping and image texture put in. If you don't have this, go under your edit preferences and under your add-ons, search for Node Wrangler then tick that node wrangler on and you'll have this functioning i'll delete the image texture i'll go shift a and add a ramp let me just rename the material real quick so this is going to be abstract one now for shader number one we'll start with a voroni texture okay i'm gonna add it here and i'm gonna connect the distance with the color ramp nothing is happening because we need to connect the color to the base color of the principal PSDF. And we can see we have these cells right here. Now the trick is to increase the scale as much as possible. I'm gonna go at about 200 maybe for now. And you can also turn off the randomness. So all of a sudden you get this funny looking pattern. In order to control the little dots on our material, you can go under your interpolation settings, switch to constant and then lower the bar to fine tune the size of your circles. If you want to switch, you can just do this. So basically pull the other end or you can just put in a shift A invert node. You connect it there and you can then slide between different views. This is going to be used as a factorial to actually control the distribution of materials. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this bad boy, I'm gonna push him here. Now for the texture coordinate and mapping, if you feel so inclined, you can also connect it to the vector. So you have the distribution along your UVs or generate it. Shift D, duplicate that, and I'm gonna put in a mix shader. And this mix shader, I'm gonna put him right there. I'm gonna connect the two of them. And now I can start putting my material together. Now for my first material, I'll use something that's a bit more metallic. But the way I did that shader was I used something that's really metallic and then I used something that's really plastic. Having selected the principal BSDF, you can go shift control T and that's going to open the search bar, the menu, so you can search for your textures. In my case, I'll just choose a metal scratched, so I'll add that to my principal BSDF. Now, if you get this error, you can go back, control T, select everything again, except for the render JPEG and uncheck relative path and it should work and put all of the textures in. I don't know why that happens. I don't know how it happens, but apparently that's kind of a thing. I have my metallic node set up right over here. So if we go all the way to the other side, you can see we have this bad boy over here. I'm just gonna check the adaptive in my subdivisions and in my settings, I'll go under surface, bump and choose the displacement and bump. So the, both the displacement and normal maps are going to be rendered in our view. 
We can then increase the scale and mid-level. I'm not really sure about the color. I think the color is just a bit too dull. I'm just going to take away the color and I'm just going to choose like a golden one, gold kind of thing, maybe rose gold. We can go rose gold. Another way of doing this is connecting your base color, shift A, search, mix RGB, and then put that in, set the mode to multiply, and then choose the secondary color to be the color you want. It's going to be a bit more natural, if that's the expression. I don't know. It just gives a bit of a different vibe. You can also increase the factorials to one, so it means that it's fully multiplied. But I kind of like the, the result that we get there. For the second material, let's choose something more plasticky. I'm just going to do something that's a bit dark green, bluish, something like that. Increase the factorial to 0 0.5. We're almost getting like sort of a patina type of vibe over here. I'm going to decrease the roughness, increase the specular and specular tint. So specular to 0 0.8, specular tint to 0 0.5, roughness to 0 0.2. I do that because the specular, it kind of shows the shininess of the material. And then you go to specular tint, which mixes the specular with the roughness, which is sort of like a factor for Again, another factor for shininess. At least that's how I understand it and that's how I use it. I'm just going to add a bump node here for the second one and I'll connect the previous one. So I'm just going to connect my color ramp that we've created earlier and I'm going to connect that color ramp to the height of my bump map. I'm going to connect that normal to the normal. So that means it's going to start and create some bumps, which is exactly what I need. I don't want them so much and I can also invert them. So when you have your metallic principled BSDF and your plastic BSDF, just connect the color to the mix shader and voila. You can play around with the settings a bit more. Maybe you don't want it to be as pronounced. Maybe you would like it to be just a bit softer. Another thing you can do is decrease the strength so it's not as obvious. I'm also going to decrease the strength of my metal material because it's just a bit too aggressive. But I think the constant setting with our little spheres or other circles works best wind them down so they get really little and you can further increase the scale of your Vorona so it really 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 goes overboard. So that's it for material number one. Material number two. This is one that I've seen a lot on Pinterest and it's very popular with modern stuff like uh, I see it a lot in abstract renders and abstract compositions. Again, we're going to repeat the whole process. So control T to add a texture coordinate, a mapping node, delete the image texture and add a color ramp. And now in this case, we're again going to use the Voroni texture and we're going to connect it, but we're going to connect the color. If I connect the color to the color again of my principled, you can see we have this. So if I lower the randomness and increase the scale, you can see we get this pixelated sort of pattern. If you ever want to create Minecraft textures, I would say this is the easiest way to fake it. It's not going to be exactly like Minecraft, but whatever. I'm just going to increase the randomness. And now you can start seeing that it has this sort of like Voron typical Voronoi texture. I'm going to connect the mapping vector to the Voronoi vector like that. So I have everything connected. Everything is in UVs. Perfect. Now comes the fun part. Change the colors a bit and let's see what that does to our whole thing. So I'm going to go with something, let's say reddish, maybe dark red. I'm going to add another thing that's a bit more orangey. So we're trying to go like a nice little circle around. And I'm going to add another one just to break stuff a bit, maybe sort of almost a greenish one. I'm just going to drop down the white. And now I can start to basically manipulate how much of these elements are going to be seen. And as you can see, and this is getting awfully similar to some sort of like linoleum or what is it called like material. You can see these structures a lot in many, 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 many abstract shaders. You can then also try and break some of these cells by pushing in some darker colors like that and you can then try and kind of change the whole feel 
In any case, try and find like a color scheme of three to four colors to create this and you're just going to really enjoy the results. We're going to do the same specular to 08, specular tint to 05, roughness to 02 and voila, we have our material. We don't need any special bumps or whatever here. It's just this mega simple. I can also just shift A, add a sphere so we can compare. We can pull the sphere up here, shade smooth it, shift, select, and then copy materials to select it. And you can see how it behaves on the sphere. Of course, you need to also unwrap it and do all of the stuff that needs to be done for your object to behave properly. But this is essentially that abstract type of material you see in a lot of abstract renders. Abstract material number three is going to be dead, dead easy. We're going to use the principled PSDF, though this time we're not going to use any shortcuts. We're just going to go specular to 08, specular tint to 05, roughness to 02, and we're just going to leave the sheen tint for now. I'm just going to increase the clear coat to 05 and the clear coat roughness to let's say 03. I usually go from 02 to 05 depending on what I want. I'm going to add a color ramp and I'm going to add a Fresnel, Fresnel, I don't know what's it called, node. And I'll connect this to the factorial of the color ramp and I'll connect the color ramp to my principal PSDF. And you can sort of see what's happening. Now, if you try to increase the index of refraction, you can see actually what's happening. It's adding some sort of value along the lines of the outside. So if we switch our thing over here, you can see that now it's adding black in the outline. And you can also see it, though not as much, in the rendered view. Now, the thing is, this can be useful for... I don't know, cartoony type of stuff, if you're doing like toon stuff, maybe something like that. But it's also good for faking some sort of textile. So if I bump up the lightness and I start adding some bluish notes, some stuff like that, you can notice we start to get some, some very like satiny type of vibe from the material. It's really interesting. And if you bump the sheen, and then lower the sheen tint, you can further see how it starts to behave and, and it almost fakes textile. And if you increase the IOR, so the index of refraction, the effect is going to be much stronger. Play around with the IOR. I would say the settings, this is how it looks in the inside, so you know that it's actually functioning, because if you take it away, you can see the distribution is kind of strange it doesn't work really well but when you add it in with the sheen tint you you get some really 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 interesting results that's going to be it for this tutorial we learned how to do really quickly three different abstract materials hopefully this will help you in your renders or in just exploring stuff in general uh, like i said if you like this content, consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment. I always read those. I always take your guys' advice or comments to heart. Uh, I'll be having a Patreon coming out very soon. I also have a really exciting announcement because we're very close to 10k on Instagram. In any case, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one.